Hey everybody. Dan. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Mark Holloway. I can't sit down. His entrance. <laughs> my entrance. My giggle. My graceful entrance. <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy Fourth. Well, I hope everyone had a great. Ago. I hope everyone had a great Fourth of July. Some of you may still be on your vacation. Me. A couple of we're kind That's of at a little. Family, so we celebrate for a while. Yeah, got a little bit of a skeleton crew here today. A couple of well, decided to take that floating holiday. More than a couple. We want to kind of finish up our series on how to make six figures uh, today, and today we're going to specifically talk about housing. Mm -hmm. And the real topic here, and the, the suggestion we're going to make to you is take the housing stipend from a company yep. that's been offered to you. Yep. Um, some of you don't have that choice. Some companies don't offer housing, so um, you know, small agencies, you know, that's that's where the biggest risk is. But when you have that choice. Our recommendation to kind of pad out to that six-figure income is take the housing stipend for a multitude of reasons. Yep. Tell me some of those reasons. Money. Money. <laughs> Money. Oh, no. Thanks. Okay, good. that's it. We're done. I mean, hello. <laughs> well, we'll get into it. Why is Well, that? because you, you know, if you're frugal. Right. And, uh, you know, you can live simply. That's key. Um, you're going to be able to keep the difference between what you're paying in rent and you know what your stipend, right. your full stipend is, and you know sometimes that could be as much as nine hundred bucks. Sometimes it could be a I lot. Mean, it could be a couple thousand per cent. And again, what well, you're I mean, is just even a month. Right. A lot of a lot of agencies, most agencies are gonna are gonna put their nurses up in nice housing. You've all heard the horror stories of those. Well, we try. Full agencies, yeah. agencies that don't. They try to save money and. Right. Keep the buck. That's a whole different topic. We've kind of addressed that a little bit. Nothing is free. Go, how, I go think see. we should do a series on how companies mess with nurses. <laughs> yeah, we will. We've got a new series. <laughs> Things planning. to look out for. But <laughs> when most agencies, again, are going to want their nurses to be comfortable in housing. So we do typically try to put you up in nice housing. And sometimes it's either going to be, um, I don't want to use a brand, but a, a, a corporate hotel that you can stay extendedly at. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Or, for a length of time. Right. So those are kitchen. those are pricey because they're always in yeah. nice locations, but they're they're expensive. And then mm -hmm. of course, you know, apartments that are again that rent for three months typically are gonna be that corporate housing, which is usually much higher than what yeah. an apartment would be if you rented it yourself. So there's a lot of money available. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not telling you that you know you need to go and live in a terrible place or a place you're uncomfortable. But those nurses that are frugal, those nurses that have that kind of Marine Corps mentality, they save a lot of money. And they, every dollar they're not giving to an either agency or to a hotel, they're putting their own pockets, typically tax-free. Yeah. Right. Typically tax-free, or isn't it? <laughs> well, again, I'm not going to speak for all agencies. It should be. <laughs> um, but again, that's the, the point is that this is just another addition. If you followed this series at all, and if you haven't, I absolutely urge you guys to go back and start from the beginning. All these little tips, starting with, again, the agency you choose, which is number one, and making sure you're being paid properly, all the way up to something as seemingly insignificant as taking the housing stipend, yeah. um, is all leads up to that six-figure income. And I don't care if you are a specialty nurse, highly in demand, or a non-specialty nurse, specialty nurse that seems to you know have more, more options and maybe a little bit less pay rate, you can make six figures as a travel nurse if you follow these rules. Yeah, I definitely see the nurses that make more money are the ones that are the least picky in terms of housing. They will, they'll rent a room. Yes, they do their due diligence and, you know. Um, From somebody at the hospital sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, or Airbnb or VRBO yes. or those kinds of things. Um, <clears throat> or recommendations from boards, you know, on social media. Um, but yeah, the ones that make the most in terms of the housing stipend are the ones that are like, look, I just need a mattress, a shower, <laughs> right. a plug to plug in my hot plate. Again, that's not for everybody that's watching right. this video. So we understand there are many of you that, listen, I like to live in, in nice accommodations. Comfort. <laughs> I don't think he's ever camped, ever. But, but anyway, that, the point not. being is that if you can, and you're willing to make some sacrifices, there's a lot of money to be made. And yeah. again, some tips. If you were to call uh, some of the hotels locally or some of the places that you know have some housing and let them know that you're part of that hospital. Yeah, that's a big tip is to actually dip. call. A lot of nurses will just give. Because there's a hospital discount. Okay, now go. I, well, <laughs> uh, but just the bigger point is just pick up the phone and call because a lot of nurses will just get on Expedia, yeah. you know, and find hotel, hotel.com or whatever. And um, you, if, if you pick up the phone and you talk to the manager, um, and they understand that you're going to be there for a while. They'll typically give you an extended um, lease for three months. Right. 
I think Airbnb and those kind of places are really um, kind of the most popular right well, now. Well, I think a word of caution, be careful. And yeah. that's the last thing we'll say about this topic is that, you know, some of the websites and I mean, whether it's a Craigslist, be real careful. Um, you know, of course people are gonna showcase you know, photos that may not represent. Mm -hmm. See if you can get some references. I recommend all that stuff before you before you decide to slap down your own personal deposit or whatever. Definitely don't stay in an Airbnb that does not have multiple, many, many reviews and good reviews. The other thing that I would say, I know he wants to wrap it up, but I, I see a lot of people, and, and I have a bunch that travel with RVs. Yeah. Um, and while those are great, it's a great way to, you know, make keep a lot of the stipend. Um, other you have to consider other issues because there are times when you, there may be a high paying assignment like say in you know a, a cold month where you know an RV is not necessarily conducive you know they close the parks and, and that kind of stuff so you know when you, if you're considering an RV definitely it's a big take, investment kind of a whole different it topic. is but and well it is but it's also something to just think about because it will prevent you sometimes from being able to go to some higher paying assignments well, definitely, and so. if you're, if you're, you know, and I don't want to for, foreshadow what we're going to talk about next, our next series, but if you're kind of marketable, and you can actually, those, those, you know, having an RV pays for itself, um, you can not only, you know, take care of that payment, mm -hmm. but put some more money in your pocket. Well, too, and so. believe it or not, there are actually assignments out there that on the post, the job post, says would prefer a traveler with an RV, because if you think about a lot of the locations um, that have high needs, they are, you know, oil boom spots, pipeline spot, spots. So housing, don't have a lot of housing. Assets. And housing is, is, is difficult. So they will say, you know, we'd really prefer a traveler with an RV. So definitely. RVs are good, but it's something Absolutely. to think about. So take that housing stipend, guys. Yeah. It's definitely a great recommendation. It's, it's, it just doesn't sound like a big thing, but it's one of those little things that you can do that isn't so little at the end of the assignment. You can multiply that over four consecutive assignments of the year. It's a lot of money, and it might just get you over that six figure should if you bother anything else. This is our last. It is. It's our last one in this series. So we want to tell you real quickly that we're going to open up a next series next uh, Friday, and we're actually got a lot of reviews on our last video series. Some of them were that we couldn't hear us, um, but there was a lot of people that called in and said I really liked hearing more about that marketability that you, I was doing with Christopher, and um, we felt that there was enough there that instead of doing a ten minute video, we felt there we broke that down and really walked people through it a little slower and they could hear, we thought they'd be good. So our next video series we'll kick off next Friday is how to be marketable and your travel and marketability and some of the steps that you can take to ensure that you're gainfully employed all year long. Thanks guys, happy Friday. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.